This is our, our Mother's Day special. We're stepping away from 1 Thessalonians for a Mother's Day special. There's one unique mother in the Bible. In fact, there are three that uh, are unique in themselves. One of them is in our text today. There's a woman in the Bible that's called the mother of many nations. And I'm, I'm picking up this uh, story in verses 15 through 19. We're in the 17th chapter. When you begin chapter uh, 19, verse 1, Abr Abram, Abram was 99 years old when the Lord appeared to him. And his wife is 90, verse 17. Verse 15, then God said to Abraham, between verse, verse 1 and 15, Abram's name has been changed. I can't tell you how important that is. His name has been changed from exalted father to the father of many nations. God said to Abraham, see, that's not the same thing in verse 1. Look at verse 1 now. He's called Abram. In the next 14 verses, his name's going to be changed. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, her name is going to be changed. Your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and indeed I will give you a son by her. Try to clear that up with Abraham. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, many nations, kings of people will come from her. Who is the her? Who is the her? Sarah. All right, he's made that clear. He's called her. He changed her name, didn't he? Yeah, because her name means noble lady of grace is the idea. Her name, her name is princess. Her other name meant contentious and argumentative, Sarai. And he changed her name to a, a noble grace lady, a princess, a doctrinal, spiritual princess, not one in it. All of this is prophetic. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. And said in his heart, careful what you say in your heart, <laughs> someone is listening. And that's a good thing. It's not the government either. And said in his heart, will a child be born to a man a hundred years old? And will Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? I love how quick he took in doctrine. In verse 15, she's Sarai. And her name is changed to Sarah. He's called this woman, no telling how many years, Sarai. Agreed? I mean, when they left the Ur of Chaldee somewhere around 70, and they left at 75, they were married then. Think how long uh, he's called her Sarai. Boom, he calls her Sarah. I mean, that's taking doctrine in really speed. And that's the way we all should do it. You know how that got there? By faith. That's how the word of God is cycled from the right lobe to the left lobe. Boom, just like that. By faith. Abram said to God, oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, no. My goodness, how many times God have to say no before he says no? But Sarah, your wife, will bear you a son, 
and you shall call his name Isaac. You know what Isaac means? Yeah, laughter. Uh, that'll definitely be a gate question. Laughter. And now we know why. And that, watch this now. Watch what God said he's going to do to Abraham and Sarah. I will establish my covenant with him, Isaac, for an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. You know what makes that an everlasting covenant? Not because Abraham was everlasting and not because Sarah, Sarah was everlasting. Because the seed of Abraham is everlasting because God raised him from the dead. The seed is Christ. What gives everlasting to any covenant is Christ. Well, what a wonderful... A mother of many nations. And he's the father. If you read the first 14 verses, he's the father of many nations. And so God has brought a new marriage into their life, hasn't he? No matter how long they've been married, he's brought a whole new marriage concept into their life, changed their names, changed their structure within the plan of God. It's a powerful idea. I hope that will happen to you this Mother's Day. I hope that will happen to you. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and we're going to get in to study this and see what a phenomenal thing this was and how God wants to do some of the things in our life. You know, if you've got one of those ho-hum lives, you should leave today with great expectation that God, God, that God didn't save you to have a whole hum life. You know, a whole hum is when you yawn and put your hand over your mouth. A whole hum life, that's not what Christianity is about. It's an exciting process where God is developing us into the character of his, of his son in an everlasting covenant with him. And your life ought to be exciting and dramatic and everything, just as much as theirs or anyone else in the pages of the Scripture. Let's pray. I give you a moment of silence as a believer priest to confess sin if necessary. It is necessary if you want to study the Bible because you can't, you can't study it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin, mental attitude types, sins of the tongue overt sins. 1 John 1, 9, confess them to the Father. He will forgive you and cleanse you. Cleansing is the work of Christ from the cross to the Christian life through sin and the blood of Christ. When you confess it as a believer, you are restored to sanctification, the ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And that's necessary, according to John 15, 25, 26, in that passage, to teach and recall the Word of God. Well, Father, we're so thankful today for these that have come our way by the automobile and the Internet. We pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth of the Word of God on this Mother's Day about a woman who is in the plan of God going to be declared not only to her and her husband, but a public declaration in the Word of God. She is going to be from this day forward forever known as the mother of many nations because of Christ. Her child, Isaac, is going to be the seed that will become Jesus Christ in the New Testament. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, who is this mother of many nations in the Bible? Well, we know it is Sarah, <laughs> not Sarai. And you know why God changed her name? She, when she was Sarai, she reflected a great deal of her time, either passively or aggressively, old man thinking of Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. And if you study her life, you can see it. Sometimes she's passive in rebellion, and sometimes she's aggressive with it. But God saw a spiritual growth. And when he changed her name, and I want you to listen to me clever, when he changed her name, he changed it because she had reached super grace status. She had reached super grace maturity in her life.
and he changed her name. And he began to pour blessings on her. Barak, he, he, Barak blessings on her. I mean, straight from God. This is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. Point number one, I'm going to talk about four things this morning before we take a break. God revealed and sealed the answer to the everlasting covenant of the old covenant doctrine of who is the mother of many nations. Of course, he tells us it is not Sarai, it is Sarah. And he writes in verse 16, I will bless Barak. That's straight from that's straight in down the pipe from God to her. I will bless her, and indeed I will give you a son by her, not someone else. You know, once again, God is trying to tell him, you've got to step up. I changed your name because you have the maturity to live out. You're not Abram anymore, you're Abraham. Chapter 17 is a change in the life of these two people in the plan of God. God said, I'm ready to bless you. I will bless her and she shall be mother of many nations. Kings of people will come from her. Listen to me. Now, don't miss that. You ought to circle the word kings. Because that's a divine institutional idea. But in regard to this, it's messianic. And therefore, the idea of the king is going to run messianic under the priest nation of Israel. While it is true that kings, presidents, and all officials of, the, of, of nations are divine delegated authority, and while that, this applies in some degree to that, that basis, the truth of the matter, in this specific case, we're talking about the kings that would come through the Davidic line. That's why the Davidic covenant is important to the Abrahamic covenant. The kings that's going to come through Sarah is going to be the Davidic kings. Prophetically. Now, Saul's going to be involved in all of that. He, he's going to be under a whole different office than you're going to find David to be. If you study the life of David and I Saul, you'll see it. Well, anyhow. But God said to Ab when Abram made this idea, well, what about Hagar and Ishmael? No, 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 forget all that stuff. No, 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 no. How many times do I have to tell you no before no means no? Sarah, your wife, shall have a son, and you shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him. That's going to go Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, then into Judah, then into David. And this is the chain of events. This is at the beginning of a wonderful chain of events that's going to come forward till we finally get the Messiah in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that actually come out of that seed an everlasting covenant because Christ is the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How do I know that? I know it because of Galatians 3.16. Among many, I know it because I studied the Old Testament as well. Now the promises, Old Covenant, were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say and to seeds, plural, as referring to many, but rather to one and to your seed, that is Christ. And out of him, listen to me now, and out of him will come many nations. Look, <laughs> all the Davidic kings were of many nations or one? One. It wasn't a many, right? They all, they all were king of the priest nation of Israel. 20 kings, boom. Christ. Once he comes into the world, 
all the way unto the end of the second coming of Christ. He's the king of what? He's the king of what? He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Is another Davidic covenant. They, 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 they never spread their wings and conquered the world. They stayed unique as one nation looking for the seed of the Messiah. And uh, now we look... Not for the seed to come, but we look for the man who was crucified, buried, and raised from the dead to come again, right? Galatians, Paul, when Paul lays, that, lays this out, you ought to read verse 8 too. People go, well, how were people saved in the Old Testament? Just like they're saved in the New Testament. Except in the Old Testament, it's a prophetic gospel. In the New Testament, it's a historical gospel. You gotta read. You gotta read Paul a little bit. You get it. Open your eyes to a lot of things. Point number two. Hey, I, I need to give a shout out to John Clements. Uh, John will be listening to me today, and so I thank you, John, for listening. John Clements used to be in our church. He moved to. He and his wife got bad health, and they moved out to Tucson, Arizona. And he called me the other day. In fact, yesterday, and I had a wonderful conversation with John Clemens. He said to say hello to all of you that might still be with me uh, and him. Uh, he lives off from our teaching every day, and that's a wonderful thing. Point number two, Sarah, listen, this is important. She was a Shemite Gentile. Hebrews 11 chapter, if you read Hebrews 11 chapter, with Abraham, everybody, all the believers were, were, were Shemites, you know, Sethites to Shemites. Seth and Shem, you know, Noah and the flood, and he gives it to Shem. Well, anyhow. Sarah was a, a Shemite Gentile until the birth of Isaac. Show you how God, this is what he says, I'm going to barack you. I'm going to barack you. This is what he's talking about. He's going to do something impossible in the human realm. He's going to take a 90-year-old woman and she's going to have a natural childbirth. And he's going to let her live to be the age of 126 to raise him. Ain't God wonderful? That's Barak. When he says, I will bless her, that's what that's all about. I mean, that's the, she is going to experience the fruit of the blessings under Barak. I mean, he's coming right down from God to her, boom. Not going through Abraham, not going through another uh, Object, no, right direct, Barak, right direct, God to him, boom, God to her, boom. It's a marvelous thing. And she got to experience that. And the reason God doesn't, he'll do it to your life if you'll reach spiritual maturity and stay there to super grace, he'll do the same thing with you. But he can't do it now because you've got so many distractions that he has to give things to you and do things for you on the side rather than direct. That's why spiritual maturity is so important because God wants to deal with you directly. Not wait a day to get your payday. Get it now. Boom. Well, it's a, it's a marvelous concept. I can tell you that's a marvelous concept. But she, in the, in the, in the, in the, the post-Diluvian period, uh, she was a Shemite Gentile <clears throat> until the birth of Isaac. It was then that she became a Hebrew and the mother of many <clears throat> nations in Christ. <clears throat> the same with Abraham. <clears throat> Sarai was her, gen was her, was her uh, Gentile name, her Shemite name, <clears throat> and it was changed to Sarah, the mother of many nations, based on 
the birth of Christ through her. Prophetically. This was also true of Abram, who was a, a Shemite Gentile, who was circumcised between verses 1 and 14, and became a Hebrew Abraham. You can compare Genesis 11 with 17 and find that. Abraham, not Abram, but Abraham became the father of a multitude of nations, Genesis 17, 4 and 5. They are now both in high status in the plan of God that needs to move forward in, his, in biblical history. Listen, I'm telling you, the same is true for you and me. The same is true. You're not, neither am I, where we're, where we're headed. And I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking on earth. He is ready to bless us beyond measure. There's no way to measure the birth. There's no scientific measurement of what God is going to do with this 90-year-old woman who believes herself, who has been barren ever since she, from, listen, from puberty to 90, she's been barren. All of those years, she's been barren. All of that's going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. All of that's going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. God spoke it and it came into existence. That's Barak. He wants to do that with you and I. This is, not, this is not old Bible stories that are not relevant to our life. Listen, this story is relevant to Christ, right? And the coming of Christ. We live in the day of the coming of Christ. How much more Barak does want God want to give us than something back there? We are the people that God has chose for the last days. You and I. We live in the days of the coming of judgment, of fire. We're the people. And God wants to bless us in a mighty way to promote his, his program. And if you study the guys in Hebrew 11, if you study their lives, you'll see that they all made Hebrews 11 because they stayed faithful in the midst of storms and stresses and all that kind of stuff that we go through as human beings in the devil's world. Always the bright light is God. And, and we need to know that. We are the bright light. Stop listening to darkness dictate how we live. Stop listening to darkness tell us how we should think and feel and live. It is the word of God that is the light onto our path. My, 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 we listen to all these people. Listen, there's not a medical science group in the world that would have put their signature on Sarah at 90. Come on now. Would they? Not worth, not, and listen, I understand that, but that's why the word of God trumps all that stuff. That's how God can reverse anything in your life. Through the word of God. They, she didn't do it on her own. They'd have never done it on their own. But God did it. That's called grace through faith. <laughs> Listen. You need to get your head out of the, out of the COVID and get it out of darkness. Even Listen, you can tell when it's dark and when it's run by devil because it doesn't make even common sense. My, 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 people. <laughs> I said when this whole thing started, listen, their science is going to be about as good as you put stick, stick, straw in your hair and walk around with it every day and this is why I don't have COVID. 
It came by God, it'll leave by God. All this other stuff is Mickey Mouse. And listen, if I'd have been the guy that wore it and I'd have been on television, at the end, I would have won the story. I was the first guy to wear it in my hair. I never got it. All my family wore it in their hair, and they never got it. Now, I'd have started a whole new science. My, my, my. Listen, at some point, we have to walk by faith, not by sight. And you can always tell, even the unbeliever knows when the sight don't make sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm not walking anymore because you're walking through booby traps. Not not walking with you anymore. Don't we all have find our way through, out of life by walking with the wrong people in the wrong places doing the wrong things? My, my. <laughs> Listen, Abram, Abraham has changed to Abra, Abram has changed to Abraham. God did that because he saw something in him worthy for promoting. That's a field promotion in the military. That's a big one, too. It surprised me many years ago when I read this story that Matthew's genealogy of Christ including Gentile women, excluded Sarah. They included Tamar and Rahab and Ruth and Bathsheba, but they never mentioned Sarah, which would have been a, you know. I thought, but not obvious once I read the story. And what's the answer? I, listen, the answer is God chose not to do it. Right? It's not Matthew's fault. God chose not to do it. But I tell you, it would be strong for me not to. I'd have stuck her name the first one in there. If you're going to mention women, you're going to mention Abraham, maybe we ought to mention Sarah. But anyhow, you know, that's why I didn't write the Bible. Please note that Sarah was the prophetic many, mother of many nations, not just one. That's because of Christ. Point number three, Sarah was the prophetic Hebrew mother of Christ and therefore the mother of many nations. Now, when you study the Bible, you meet some inter interesting women that God had his eye on. Listen, when God talks about women in the Bible, and, and he, and he, and he uh, applauds them, he, he, he talks honorably, the noble women of grace. Eve, for example, is known as the mother of all the living. Genesis 3.20. I don't, know, I don't know what I wrote on my paper. Now the, something called his wife. Now the man should be the man. Must be, must be an S near an A. Is that right? I don't know. I never learned them. Now the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. Mary, the mother of Christ. In Luke 2.11, 2, for today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That was Mary, the mother of Christ, Jesus Christ. But Sarah, Sarah was the prophetic messianic mother of many nations that would come from Christ. When you study eschatology, you study a lot about nations in eschatology. The judgment of nations, for example. And here's where it all began. Jesus Christ was the fulfillment. Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of this prophecy. In Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, I came to fulfill, not to destroy the law. This is, this is one of those. This is one of those. Matthew 28, 19 is one of these. Go therefore and make disciples of what? 
all nations. Disciples of whom? Christ. We can disciple all nations. From the top to the bottom of that nation. All the way from the leadership up, all the way to those who till the ground. Baptized in them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost or Spirit. Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. For me, that's Moody and Sinclair County. Acts 1.8. You should read that first chapter of Acts when he talks about the you. Who are the you? And then follow it into Acts, the second chapter, verse 1 in Pentecost. Point four in closing. Both Sarah and Abraham's names were changed as a sign of their spiritual maturity in the plan of God. And there's a verse for you and I. 2 Peter 3.18. Grow in what? And knowledge. Grow in grace and in knowledge. Truth comes from it. Grow in grace and knowledge. This is what you have to do. You have to grow in grace and knowledge of the Word of God. And that's what God wants. That's the that's the platform for this. That's the platform for it. The biggest change from old man cosmos diabolicus thinking to new man divine viewpoint thinking was see seen in Sarah since his mother's day in Sarah's volitional submission to authority in the plan of God. Listen to me, ladies. She had reached a place of spiritual maturity in her life where she wanted the directive will of God to work daily and consistently and consistently in her life by the faith rest drill. Or what, what I refer to as the faith cycle drill. I mean, if you don't get it into a drill, into a practice system in your life daily, you'll never, you'll never get this. You'll, you'll never get where God is going to barack your life. He's going to bless it beyond any measure you could imagine. Listen, when he opened this woman's womb at 90 and gave her a wonderful pregnancy and a wonderful life following that in raising this child, gave her vitality of life in an old age. is Barak. And God wants to do that to your life. I don't care what age you are. This is exactly what he wants to do with you and I. And listen, just because you're 90, you don't sit on the sidelines. He put her in the game at 90. And her husband was 99, and he called him to the mission field. My, my, my. So much for retirement. Better, th listen, their best days were ahead of them, not behind them. Their best days were ahead of them. Your best days are ahead of you. But listen, you're never going to find them if you don't get in the Word of God and the Word of God get in you and get into a steady system of the faith cycle drill where you walk by faith, not by sight. You walk in the power of the Spirit and not in the flesh. God wants to take you places that are so far beyond your imagination. I know he, I know he does me. I know. My, my, listen, my better days are ahead of me, not behind me. I know that. How do I know that? Because I believe stories like this. Because God is always pushing you forward in the plan of God. There's always something bigger and better in the plan of God. You've got to understand this stuff.
got to quit dragging your feet. I, listen, if you're walking and dragging your feet, I salute you. But if you're dragging your feet not to walk, then I, you know, there's a problem. Nobody says, well, he's dragging his feet, you know, like on a football field. If he's crippled, never heard a coach say that. I heard a coach say a lot of times you're dragging your, some, sometimes not your feet, what you're dragging. I never, I never, what kind of a coach would say that to a poor crippled kid? I mean, my, my, my. Listen, in Hebrew, Sarah, Sarai, in Hebrew, Sarai means contentious and argumentative towards the person of authority. Her old man cosmos diabolicus always went to the person of authority rather than to the position early in her life. Sometimes she went passive, like with Pharaoh and Abimelech, and other times she went aggressive, like Hagar. You know, give Hagar the cigar. I was going to preach that one time as a sermon in a tobacco country, and I thought it might go over, and then the pastor told me not to. Other than aggressive. Listen to me, and I'll tell you why. Here was her old man stuff. Look, you know this. Now, God didn't tell it all of it, but he told the main one. You know what her old man stuff was? Over all these years until God got her to 90, she got hung up on being barren. Every time she get left the plan of God, it was because of some conflict in her soul about being barren and unfulfilling. I'm just telling you, you should read about Sarah. She's a great read. Sarai laughed. It was Sarai that laughed at the directive will of God of pregnancy at the age of 90. It wasn't Sarah. It was Sarai. And listen, isn't it interesting? Listen, listen to the passion. Listen to God's passion for your life. When she laughed, God was ready to promote her because he saw in her the possibility that she couldn't see in herself. And yet, because God had promised her that, he gave her the name Sarah which she could live up to the measure of. Did you get that? That's what God wants to do with you. He, he wants you to stop taking part in the old man, start taking part in the new man, and even though the new man looks so much bigger than your po possibilities, the old man sees the possibilities and the impossibilities. The new man sees only the possibilities and not the impossibilities. Come on now. Because God is faithful to his word. God is faithful to his word. God is faithful to his word. The old man, he sees possibilities, but the impossible, he's overcome them. The new man, he sees possibilities, and he doesn't pay any attention to the impossibilities because they're not an issue anymore. The word of God is... Stand firm. Stand firm on the word of God. Stand firm. How do I stand? By faith. How do I fight? By faith. How do I walk? By faith. In whom? Well, not in yourself. <laughs> I love God. God, God. God changed her name right on the spot. Changed her name. And said, I see more potential in you then you see in yourself, look what I'm going to ask of you and believe me to, to do it. You've got the doctrine to do it. I say to you today, you've got the doctrine. God wants to take you places you cannot imagine. Don't drag your feet. The good days are ahead of us. They're not behind us. They're ahead of us. And God wants to take you to the, to the impossibles that are possible. 
Over in the new man, you go like, boy, that looks impossible. I know, but it's possible because God will bring it to pass. God will bring it to pass. God will bring it to pass. Over here in the old man, you look at the possibilities and the possibilities. The impossibilities always win. They always win because there's no faith. You fall back on old habits and old thinking, old ways. It don't advance you. It leaves you where you are and makes you miserable. Makes you miserable about yourself. Not about God, but it makes you miserable about yourself. Sarah laughs at the directive will of God, and yet God in his passion promotes her. Promotes her. Listen, new man, divine viewpoint, thank you for nothing. Here is new man, viewpoint, thinking. For nothing will be impossible with God. And look, I, I gave you a quote out of Luke 137. And you should read that sometime this week. Listen, he said the same thing in Genesis 18, 14. But I gave you two out of the New Testament. I gave you Luke 137 and 1827. While the reality is in Genesis 17 and 18 with Sarah and Abraham. New, new man, divine viewpoint thinking, always looks at the plan of God, always looks at the will of God. Nothing will be impossible with God. So God changed her name to Sarah, meaning princess or noble late grace lady. Now she understood the importance of the faith cycle drill to the position of divine delegated authority in the plan of God. She stopped questioning it. It's not about the person that holds the position over your life. It's the position. God holds that position. Every delegated position of authority God holds over your life. Stop looking at the person. That's not the issue. And listen, change their marriage. Change their marriage in a plan of God. Well, let's have a word of prayer and go downstairs and have some fellowship and come back. When you come back, be sure to pick up a second lesson uh, back there, the old to be out. So after a cup of coffee and something, uh, come on back. I'm going to give you a report today and uh, where, where we're advancing all that. And uh, so we'll be back in 15, 20 minutes. All right. We're going to try to get you out of here at a reasonable time on Mother's Day, okay? F Father, we thank you today for these that have come our way by the automobile and the internet. We pray, Father, today as we've looked at Sarai becoming Sarah, a noble grace lady that God bestowed upon her, a Barak blessing called the mother of many nations. What a wonderful tribute today. I pray that all the mothers that in the sound of my voice might be encouraged. Noble women, noble women of grace. In Jesus' name, amen.